reading is taken from John chapter 16 verses 12 to 15 and in your Bible it's on page 1084 that's in the New Testament I have much more to say to you more than you can now bear but when he the spirit of truth comes he will guide you into all truth he will not speak on his own he will speak only what he hears and he will tell you what is yet to come he will bring glory to me by taking from what is mine and making it known to you. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is, that belongs, all that, that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said, the Spirit will take from what is mine and make it known to you. Everybody nice and happy this morning? Might want to tell some of your faces that one. No, I'm joking. We're going to start with a joke in a minute. Um, a couple of people have referred this morning to family and actually church being like a family. And it was really interesting because I woke up ridiculously early this morning. Um, it was one of those mornings where I thought it was about half past seven. It was actually about ten to five, so it was really frustrating. But I came downstairs and I was, I was reading and drinking coffee. And the book I'm reading at the moment is talking very much about... Um, the different aspects of uh, Christian faith. But the one I was reading this morning was on family. And I just want to say, I think church is a family. I've heard a number of you recently refer to each other as your brothers and sisters. But I was really encouraged this morning when I saw Cheryl here this morning, when I saw Mel and the children here, because they're going through tough times right now. But where are they this morning? They've come to be with their family. And when you have difficulties, a grief, a hospital thing, very often you know, you'll have time off work, um, they'll give you some time off because you don't want to be at work in those kind of situations, but actually being around family is so powerful. So I just want to say uh, to Cheryl and to Mel and the children, it's a real blessing actually having you here and wanting to be with your family this morning and our prayers are very much with you. Now I've noticed over the last few weeks that Glynn, is, uh, when, he, when he starts to preach, he opens with a joke. Um, and I thought, I'm going to, I like that, I like humour, I like jokes. Um, my wife likes jokes as well. Um, she says she married one um, <laughs> as well. But um, this joke is, um, it's non-denominational, so hopefully I'm not going to offend you if, you if you're from a different denomination than the Anglicans. But there was a minister, and the minister was doing an open-air um, baptism service in the local river. Um, it was a nicer river uh, than Wardown Park, and there was a nice river, and they were doing a baptism and uh, this drunk comes out of the, the pub um, and uh, he, he staggers past and he's looking for a minute at, what the, at what the, what's going on and the minister says to him do you want to meet no no how do, you, do you want to find Jesus and the drunk says yeah yeah I do and he nods his head so the minister extends a hand and he, and he takes him into the water and he says I baptise you and he baptises him and he comes up and he says have you found Jesus and the drunk says no. So the minister, this isn't theologically sound, but he baptizes him again. A little bit longer this time. Pulls him back up again. He says, have you found Jesus now? And the drunk says, no. This time the minister's getting really frustrated. And he holds him down for 30 seconds. Okay, and the drunk comes up gasping and spitting water. And the minister says, have you found Jesus yet? And the drunk says, no, are you sure that's where we fell in? <laughs> uh, I'm glad you laughed, because I've told it to two groups of people this week. One of them was that response, and the other one just looked at me really, really blankly. And I think they got it, they just didn't, didn't find it funny. Now, it's good, it's good to have humour. Um, I'm hoping that's not the only thing you're going to remember from this, from this talk this morning. Um, when I was given this passage, and we're actually going to read it again in a minute, but we're actually going to read it together um, out loud, I was a little bit confused because not being completely versed in all of the Anglican ways, 
I looked at the passage and listened to Glyn's talk from last week, and I thought, well, normally you work your way forward. Um, but the passage that I'm doing this morning comes before the passage that Glyn did last week. And that confused me for a minute, and I quickly text Wendy to find out if she'd given me the right passage. And then I, I used my common sense, and I googled online lectionary and realized that I did have the right passage. And when I first read it, I thought, it's three verses. There's a lot in there, but I'm not sure what I'm going to get out of it. So I thought, right, I need to, I need to read this. I, I need to reflect on it. I need to pray over it. So I did what I like to do uh, when I really need to be thinking. I took the dog for a walk, um, and I went off for a walk. And that's very often where my thinking time um, comes. And then all of a sudden, I was bombarded with these thoughts that kept coming. And there was two of them. <laughs> that's quite a lot for me. Um, but we're going to read the passage again. It's going to pop up on the screen, hopefully. Um, can we have the... Is it? It's not there. It is, it's coming. Here it comes. Okay. And what I would like us to do, I'd like us to read it out loud together. Okay? There is so much more I want to tell you, but you can't bear it now. When the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all truth. He will not speak on his own, but will tell you. Glory by telling you whatever he receives from me. All that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said, the spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. Now, we'll leave that up there for, for a minute or two. Um, have you ever been in a situation where you're absolutely dying, busting to tell somebody something? You've got so much you want to tell them. It might have been a holiday you've been on. It might be a new job. It might be a new mission opportunity. You're just so bubbling over. You, you, you just don't know where to start. You've got so much to say. Well, I don't think this was quite as Jesus was, because I think Jesus was very measured, and he knew what he wanted to say, and he knew what the disciples could take on. But I just want to leave you with a minute, just thinking about being so excited and having so much to say, but you know you can't say it all at once, because people just won't take it all on board. Now, many of you that are are wives, um, girlfriends, will probably realize that there's a limited amount you can say to your man for him to take it all in. You know that certain things you have to drip feed. Okay, I have a wonderful wife who likes post-it notes. She does little lists. And the reason she does those lists is because I can't take too much information on board. Okay, It might only be three things to get at Sainsbury's. When I get to Sainsbury's, I'll only remember two of them. Okay, Jesus knew how much his disciples could take. He knew them intimately. He knew their humanness. He knew their weaknesses. He knew everything about them. And sometimes when we read the accounts in Scripture, and we read about the disciples, we think, what a bunch of plonkers. What? Jesus is telling them things. Why, Why can't they understand what he meant by that? That was so obvious. But of course it's obvious to us, because we've got the benefit of hindsight. We've got it written down in Scripture. We're understanding what was said, because we're reading it, and we get the explanation. Um, And I come across something this week. I don't know if any of you use um, a website called Bible Gateway. Um, It's a fantastic resource. It's it's great. It's just about got every single translation of Scripture you can imagine. You can look verses up on. But it's also got lots of blogs. It's got lots of commentaries. And the guy who is in charge of um, some of the content on there had this to say. It's tempting to scoff at the disciples for their weak faith and ignorance. But to do so is to miss the point. We're no different. Like the disciples, we don't always understand what God is doing in our lives. We read God's clear promises in the Bible, yet so often succumb to stress and doubt when life gets tough. Sometimes it isn't until after God has brought us through a trial that we are able to look back at Scripture and understand that he was with us from the beginning. God loves us as he loved the disciples. He wants us to bring us into understanding and belief. He wants us to look back at events in our lives and then examine them 
examine scripture to see his words and promises confirmed. And while we sometimes want to roll our eyes at them, we can be grateful to Jesus' hapless disciples for, for, for providing us an object lesson in human ignorance and divine patience. Now I thought that was a really, really uh, encouraging statement. And if any of you want to reread that, so I can send it to you, or I can send you the link for where we, where we find it. Now as Christians, as followers of Jesus, we have the benefit of knowing who the Holy Spirit is. We've read scripture, and we can see the works of the Spirit. Now I had a quick, um, a quick look through, and I've just got a few different verses from the Old Testament and the New Testament where the Spirit was at work. In the very, very beginning of the Bible, in Genesis 1 verse 2, it says, The earth was formless and empty, and darkness covered the deep waters, and the Spirit of God was hovering over the surface of the waters. So the Spirit of God was there at the very, very, very beginning of our world. We then got in the next book in the Bible, in Exodus, I have filled him with the Spirit of God, giving him great wisdom, ability, and expertise in all kinds of crafts. Now this is when the children of Israel were given the job of building the tabernacle. And if you've ever read Exodus and you read the, the detail that God instructed them to go into in building and making things for the tabernacle, it is absolutely amazing. But the Spirit of God was given to some of the craftsmen to be able to produce and to make and to do things the way they did. In the book of Judges, at that moment, the Spirit of the Lord came powerfully upon him and he ripped the lion's jaws apart with his bare hands. He did it as easily as if it were a young goat, but he didn't tell his father or mother about it. Who knows who that character is? Who can tell me? Samson. Okay. All of us blokes fancy ourselves as a bit of a Samson at some times. Okay? But the Spirit of God came upon Samson in such a way he fought with a lion. Now, I don't know if any of you watched, there was a program on TV this week, or on Catch Up, and it was about this man and this woman that went out into, the, out into Africa, and they were filming lions. And they had this kind of like little plastic dome that they sat under, and they were filming them. And they had these like bar things on the outside that had electrical wires and all connected and they could tell you the strength of the bite the lions gave now even if you were just watching it and you just hear that low growling noise, the guy narrating it and doing the commentary turned around and said if you were ever anywhere and you heard that growling noise, you would be fearful, you know if we were to suddenly hear that noise outside uh, Steve would quickly run to the back and shut the doors um, and we'd probably remind the church wardens that their job is to protect the vicar, and they'd probably come straight down the front to protect Glynn, and I'm sure he'd be very happy at having their protection. Okay? But you don't take on a lion just because you know what you're thinking, yeah, you fancy some, you want some, come on then. I'll take the lion on. You can't do it. Samson was a strong man, but he was strong because the Spirit of God came over him. And sometimes we forget about the Holy Spirit, we think the Holy Spirit was just a New Testament idea. You know, when Jesus came, the Holy Spirit came. And the Holy Spirit did come at Pentecost, and we remembered that last week. And it's Trinity Sunday today. But the Holy Spirit is part and parcel. It's Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit has been there from the beginning. But we have the opportunity now, as Jesus' followers, to be filled with him. In the past, the Holy Spirit was given to specific individuals for specific tasks, taking on a lion, being involved in building the tabernacle. Several of the Old Testament people were full of the Spirit to do something specific that God had given them to do. Today, living as Christians, living as people who follow Jesus, the Holy Spirit is available to all of us. We are all able, we can all ask for, and we can all be filled with God's Spirit. And journeying through the Christian life without the Holy Spirit is like getting in your car but not filling it up. You might get a little way, but actually you're not going to do much good. And because I work with young people and children, I thought I'm going to illustrate this with an illustration. And I'm warning you now, I'm going to get a couple of volunteers to come up and help me with this. 
So now is an interesting time to study the carpet. Okay, so I'm thinking I need somebody who I know has used a computer before. She helps me on my youth team. Uh, she's quite a new member to my youth team. She's now starting to worry. Uh, she's in the worship team this morning. And Ify, can you come up the front here, please? Come and help me. Come and, come and help me. This is nothing. This is really simple, what I'm going to get you to do. Can you just sit at that little chair there? Okay. Now, Ify, have you ever used a computer before? Yes? You have used a computer before. Would you say you're computer literate? I know it's a little chair, but it's a little table. Okay? Okay? You're all right there. That's it. You could, you, you, you're sure you can kneel. You're in church. Can you? <laughs> right. Now, in my bag here, okay, I'm going to give you some, I'm going to give you a computer. That's the, um, check there's the right amount of nuts and bolts in there. It should be on the instructions. Okay. There you go. Ooh, got a big, big bit here. Right. Oh, hang on, still another bit. I'll put that, no, because you might lose it. That bit there. And the really important is that bit. Okay, now if you've got to the end of the service, okay, you don't need to listen to the talk now. I want you to, by the end of the service, I want you to assemble the computer so we can connect it up, okay? But when I asked you, you said you'd used a computer before. You were familiar with computers, yeah? Using it. Okay, now, if I was to say to you that actually what I'm going to do, I'm going to go over here. Come up, come up here, please. Now, if I was going to give you the rest of the day and I was going to give you this gentleman here, would you feel more confident that you could do it? Why would you feel more confident? Because he knows about it. He's capable of putting that back together, probably blindfolded. Yeah, yeah, Josh, don't, don't start. No, no, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine, it's fine. Okay, Ify, you can go and sit down. Josh, thank you. Okay. For, for those of you who are new to church or visiting, Josh is um, just one of those people that can, he's just amazing with technical stuff, particularly computers. He's doing a degree in something or other to do with it um, as well. Um, and whenever you do ask him a technical question, he gives you a technical answer. Um, so you normally have to say, Josh, just give it to me in layman's terms. So you'll push that button. Okay, thanks. One needed to know, Josh. Okay, But you see, that's how some people go through the Christian life. They go through it without the proper guide. And the proper guide for us as Christians is the Holy Spirit. Now we can laugh and think, I had great fun taking that apart, by the way. It was, it was, it was brilliant. Okay? And we can laugh at it, can't we? Thinking, well, it's, it's a computer. But that's how we go through life sometimes, without the Spirit. We try and do things on our own, in our own strength. Now, if I'd left Ify long enough, she probably could have got a few bits in there, because some of them literally just pop in. Um, and that's some bits you have to screw in place, some bits, yeah? Ify could probably have a play around with it, but actually, the reality is it's never going to function as a proper computer again. And yet, if Josh was to do it, it would do. Now, that is the same as us. We don't, if we don't have God's filling, if we don't have the Holy Spirit in our lives, we can plod along, and we can do the church thing, and you know, we can probably maybe talk to a few people about Jesus and, you know, we can perhaps make a little bit of a difference in the world. You know, our faith might be something, but with the Holy Spirit's power in our lives, we become useful. We become fruitful, but actually we become what we're meant to be. When we're full of God's Spirit, we actually become all that God wants us to be. When we accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior, when you come to faith, when you come to that point in your life where you think, I can't do this on my own. Actually, I need you, Lord. I need Jesus. I need you. Forgive me for my sin. Forgive me for what I've been trying to do on my own and come and take charge of my life. At that point, we receive the Holy Spirit. When we're baptized, we receive the Holy Spirit. But I remember hearing an old preacher pray once, and he said, Lord, fill me with your Spirit because I leak. And so often in life, we have the Holy Spirit, and then the Holy Spirit seems to... Well, actually, the Holy Spirit doesn't go away, but actually our way of using the Spirit, our way of being filled with the Spirit, stops. So we need to be constantly filled with the Spirit. And I saw this um, picture, which I really like, the guy with the bu bucket on his head. Okay, you can be filled with something, but all of us as human beings, we have holes in our lives. We have things that get difficult. 
We have things we're worried about. We have battles we're fighting. So we need to be filled again with God's Spirit. We need to keep being filled. But also, we can be filled with God's Spirit and allow God's Spirit to work in us through God's Word. Because as we read the pages of this, and I would encourage you, if you're not regularly picking up your Bible, you need this and you need the Holy Spirit. You need them in tandem. Because the Spirit of God, and there's a, a, a caption I came up with, the Spirit of God uses the Word of God to change the people of God. If you read this, you cannot not be amazed and bowled over by what God does. You know, I was, I'm reading through Samuel at the moment, and there's just this great phrase where the Spirit of God came upon King Saul, and he got angry, and he mustered together an army. And he fought a battle. And he won the battle. But he won the battle because he was filled with the Spirit of the Lord. And in a moment, Andrew's going to play us a song, I'm hoping. Thank you. Good communication we had this week. And the song is simply called, Fill Me. And we're just going to play this. And I'm just going to really encourage you. Maybe you can stand you can sit, you can kneel, you can do whatever you feel like doing. But if you want more of God's Spirit, pray it and mean it. And for some people, when God's Spirit fills them, it manifests itself. Other people, it's just a quiet kind of just receiving and feeling ready. But I would encourage you, if you need God's Spirit, you do need God's Spirit. There's no if you need Him. But if you love Jesus, if you want to be filled more with his spirit, then ask. Because when we ask our Father in heaven, when we ask God for things, when they're good things like that, he wants to give them to us. And also, if you don't yet know Jesus, if you're here this morning and actually Jesus is just a name you've heard banded about, he was a good man, he lived a long time ago, he went around doing good, I would encourage you to think deeper than that and to actually pray when we're singing this, okay, God, if you're real, Show yourself to me. Explain yourself to me. And allow God's Spirit to speak to you.